do you know what the respiro is in cante flamenco? Take a deep breath and vámonos. Hi, this is Guillermo Guillén for Flamenco Maps. Welcome to my channel. Whether you dance flamenco, you sing flamenco, you play guitar, you play palmas, you play cajon, or you just love flamenco and you want to understand how it works, today I'll explain to you what is the respiro in the cante flamenco. The respiro is one of the main options that the singers have when interpreting a letra. In many palos, during a letra, there is a pause, or sometimes even more than one. The singer starts singing part of the letra, one or more tercios, and then he takes a pause, he takes a break, he takes a breath, he leaves space, silence, and then he starts again and finishes the letra. This pause is usually called el respiro, because respirar means to breathe. So the respiro is the breathing space. It's fundamental to understand this concept of respiro because it's in a letra one of the most important moments where the real game between the cante, the baile and the toque will take place. But before going into details of communication, interaction and improvisation between cante, toque and baile, we'll just start listening to Cantes, cantes a palo seco, without guitar and without baile to distract us. So just cante. This first example, Manuel Moneo singing por Soleá. And here we can hear Raúl Mico singing por tango. En Guadiana singing por Martinete. Ahí ven acá, mujer. Ahí ven acá, mujer. De el mundo. Convencete. Que no hay en el mundo un hombre, no hay que sea vivo y vivo como el rey del hombre. And the last one, Arcángel por burería. De la tarde señalta, de punta del día no la podemos tener por ahora todavía. No podemos tener por ahora todavía. You could observe different respiros, right? In different styles, different palos, different singers. Here we have four simple questions. Where are the respiros? Are they obligatory? How many respiros in each letra? And how long do they last? 
I would love to be able to tell you that there are simple answers to these questions, that there are rules that work all the time for every palo, but no. But admit it, it would be boring, right? The answers basically will depend on each palo and each styles because each palo and styles has their own rules. Where are the respiros? We have many different places, many different possibilities depending on the palo. Are they obligatory? Some of them are very much expected. Others are optional and others come as a surprise uh, as the result of the interpretation. How many respiros in each letra? Again, same thing. It depends on the palo, the style and the interpretation. And the length of the respiro, when there is only cante, it's up to the singer to decide if it wants to make it long or short. But there is a good news, it's that many palos and many styles within a palo share the same rules, so we don't need to learn every different style and palo with different rules. For example, Alegría de Cádiz. There are six different main styles of Alegría de Cádiz, but they all work the same way, with the same mechanism of respiros, the same traditional places for the respiros. So once we know one of them, we know all of them. And the same goes for many other palos and many other styles. And that's good news, right? As everything in flamenco, there are no strict rules. Rather than talking about rules or laws, I prefer to talk about statistics. And there should be somewhere a video about these statistics in flamenco. We'll just find different percentages of the different possibilities. Sometimes it's just a huge percentage, like maybe 98% of the time, this happens, but we still have two remaining percent of other possibilities, other options that somebody chose. And for me, this is the most interesting and the most important thing because this is art and we want freedom. We don't want very small boxes and very narrow viewing angles, right? <laughs> Don't worry, it's just like learning a new language, okay? Little by little, step by step, with consistency. When we listen to flamenco, when we watch flamenco, and when we are attending a, a concert or a show, first thing is that we want to enjoy, right? But also sometimes we need to do active listening and active watching. We need to try to understand, take the time to listen carefully and to observe and compare and cross-check and also to investigate and experiment yourself. It's so interesting when we start understanding what people are doing, like this singer is doing this and that dancer is doing that and how do they do and what is happening, how do they communicate. And this is something that you need to do because nobody will do it for you and this is how you create your own personality and your, you develop your own taste. Listening and seeing a lot of flamenco from different times, different places, different artists, different styles, different interpretations, as many as possible, to have the widest possible view. So pay close attention to this respiro, because this is the key of interaction between the cante, the toque and the baile. In this context, if the dancer or the guitarist choose to use this respiro, this space, to react, to answer, then I prefer talking about contestación rather than respiro, but we'll talk about that in the next episode. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a like, leave me a comment, ask me anything you want to know about flamenco. I'm here for you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and go and check flamencomaps.com. I have a little gift for you there and I explain all my courses, classes and my way of teaching flamenco. Don't forget, learn flamenco, make it fun, make it different but most important, make it yours.